Hi everyone, it's great to be with you. I hope you're having a good day and I hope you're ready to learn something. If you haven't already, make sure you go and grab your Bible because we're gonna use this today. And let's start with our prayer. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes, we pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you so much. Thank you that you give us this time to come together, Lord, and to learn more about you and to grow closer to you. I uh, pray that you would be with us, Lord, and keep us focused on you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we've been looking at God's design for families. And first we saw Paul, who wrote about families in the Bible and what our responsibilities are in our own families. Then we saw the story of baby Moses and his family. Then we saw Ruth, Boaz, and Naomi and their family. Then we saw Mary, Martha, and Lazarus with Jesus. And we looked at Priscilla and Aquila and their story. Well, today, you see the Christmas tree beside me? That means it's Christmas time. So we're gonna be looking at uh, God preparing the way for Jesus, our savior. So today, here is our picture, and we're going to grab our Bible and do our Bible drill. We're going to be in Luke chapter 1, verse 11. Okay, you ready? Go find it. It's Luke chapter 1, verse 11. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke in the New Testament. And we're going to be in chapter 1, verse 11. Okay, got mine here. Hope you do too. Let's read a couple of verses together. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. Wow. Let's watch our video, and then we'll come back and talk about this. Zechariah was a priest in the days of King Herod. Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth, kept all of God's commandments. They were very old and did not have any children. When it was Zechariah's turn to serve at the temple, he went inside to burn the incense. Suddenly, an angel appeared and stood beside the altar. Zechariah was afraid when he saw the angel. Wow, imagine just somebody appearing all of a sudden. I would be afraid too. Fortunately, the angel said, do not be afraid. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a son and you will name him John. He will bring joy and delight and will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will help disobedient people understand how to do what God says and he will prepare a way for the Lord. Zachariah said, how can this be? I'm an old man and my wife is getting old too. I am Gabriel, the angel replied. I stand in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. You will now be unable to speak until your child is born because you did not believe my word. Wow, that's serious business. And just as Gabriel said, 
Zachariah could not say a word. Zachariah made signs to people, but he could not talk. Elizabeth soon discovered she was going to have a baby. She declared, the Lord has done this for me. After a time, Elizabeth had a baby boy. When neighbors and family members came to name the baby, Elizabeth announced that his name was John. The people were surprised and said, none of your relatives have that name. I guess they were hoping his name would be like Zachariah Jr. or something. Zachariah took a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. Immediately, Zachariah could speak again. He praised God and said, child, you will be a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord and prepare people for him. John grew up to be a man and became strong with God's spirit. He lived in the wilderness until the time was right for him to begin preaching to the people. Okay, so what are some things that we can see from this story? Well, we know that we're looking at God preparing the way for Jesus because at Christmas time, we're celebrating Jesus's birth. And that's the most important thing we should be focused on at Christmas. And we can see that God, even before Jesus was born, was preparing a way for him. And so we saw Elizabeth and Zacharias were a couple and they wanted to have a baby and they were praying for a baby. And they got a little older and they didn't think they would be able to. But then an angel, the angel Gabriel, came to Zacharias and he told him that they would have a son named John and that he would be the one to prepare the way for Jesus to come, to tell others about him coming and to kind of help people understand who he would be, that he would be their savior. He would be the one that would come and save them. And so <laughs> we saw that, did Zacharias believe the angel at first? Yeah, no. He said, we're old. We can't have a baby. But then the angel Gabriel said, you know what? Until your baby is born, you're not going to be able to speak because you did not believe me. And sure enough, when he came out of the temple, that's what happened. He couldn't talk until John was born. And then later on, we see John grow up to be known as John the Baptist. And he is the one that actually talks to a lot of people about Jesus and helps people to understand what Jesus would be coming to do for them. Now we know what Jesus came to do for us, don't we? Yeah, we know he came. He was born on Christmas, or what we celebrate as Christmas, and he died for our sins. He died on the cross and took all of our sins and washed them away when he died on the cross so that we could be saved and we could go to heaven and be with him one day. And do you remember how we do that? He made it so easy for us, didn't he? All we have to do is admit that, yeah, we're a sinner, aren't we? We all mess up. I know I do. And then we have to believe that the only way to fix that and for us to be with God one day is for Jesus to come and to die and to take away our sins. And then we just confess that. We let God and others know that we admit we're a sinner and we believe that Jesus died for us. It's so simple. We call it the ABCs of the gospel, don't we? Yeah, it's so simple. So that's our first uh, lesson that we're going to look at about Christmas. And we're going to keep sort of looking toward Jesus uh, being born on Christmas. And I want you to keep that in your mind as all the wonderful things leading up to Christmas come. Putting up your tree, decorating, uh, starting to think about Christmas gifts and Christmas celebrations. I want you to remember the most important reason that we celebrate Christmas. And just like John prepared a way for Jesus, we're going to look at our activity and our challenge for this week, how we can sort of prepare ourselves and stay focused on Jesus being the reason for Christmas. So our activity is kind of a fun one. If you have any red or green construction paper, this is a fun way to do it, but you could pick any color or you could just use regular paper and you could color and decorate it how you want to. But what you're going to do is you're going to cut little strips of that paper. Okay. And then you're going to write on each one some ways that you think you can keep your focus on Jesus at Christmas. Okay. And then you are going to turn them into a little chain link like this one. Okay. And this is a great thing that you can hang on your tree, okay? 
and you can look at and want you to what I want you to do is on each one of them you're going to write whatever it is that you think can keep your mind focused on Jesus and then I want you to link them all together you can use glue or tape uh, link them all together as many as you can think of make it as long as you can make it and then each day with your family I want you to pick one of these and you could make a game out of it you could maybe have someone pick a number and then you could count down to that chain and then pick that chain for the day. Or you could just randomly point to a chain. And whichever one you pick, I want you to read whatever you've written on it and try to do that for the day. So here are some examples that I wrote on mine. I put on this one, you could tell somebody about Jesus and what he's done for you. Um, on this one, I said sing songs about Jesus and God. Um, on this one... I said, pray together as a family. And on this one, I said, go to church together. So those are just some things that I was thinking about and I'm gonna keep working on mine and I'm gonna see how long I can make my chain. And I hope you'll do the same. I think that's a fun little activity and challenge. And I hope you keep it up all the way until Christmas and even after Christmas, because we can always celebrate what Jesus has done for us, can't we? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at our memory verse. For a memory verse, we're going to be in John chapter 3, verse 17. Okay, and remember, John is in the New Testament too, just past Luke. And some of you may know John 3, 16. That's kind of a verse a lot of us memorize. But we're actually going to go down to the next verse. So let's read that one together, okay? For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's a great verse for what we're looking at, isn't it? Jesus is definitely our savior and that should be our focus at Christmas time and all the time. Okay, well, this was fun. I hope you had a good time and I hope you learned something and I can't wait to see you all next time. Hope you have a great week and enjoy your Mooseberry video. Thanks, bye. And now, a special report from Hunt Burkleton. Christmas, a virtually unknown winter holiday that some say goes back as far as the 1980s. But I want to know more. That's why I found myself here. Mooseberry Academy, which boasts to be home of the very, very, very gifted students. If they can't tell me the what, why, and how of Christmas, perhaps no one can. I'm investigative reporter Hunt Burkleton. And this is Hunt Burkleton Knows What's Really Going On with Christmas. Before we can dig into the why, let's figure out the what. What is Christmas? It's a winter holiday, so my guess is it's a recognition of snow. Or perhaps a celebration of seeing your own breath. But like any good reporter, I need proof. Did you say Christmas? Oh no! Have I been saying it wrong all these years? Um, that's not even a word. Well, Christmas is a holiday that celebrates the birth of our Savior. The birth of a Savior. But that begs the question, from what do people need to be saved? Fire-breathing bears? Mosquitoes? Fire-breathing mosquitoes? Mosquito-breathing bears? What is this thing that's so terrible that there's a whole holiday celebrating its defeat? No comment. I'm not talking to the press. What's so terrible? <laughs> I don't know. Evil bears? I know when I won a staring contest with a bear. I needed to be saved from the cage. Kablamo! That was a close call. That's not what we needed to be saved from. Our Savior was born to save us from sin. And who is this sin you're speaking of? It's not a who, it's a what. Is it a bear? No, I promise this has nothing to do with bears. See, a long time ago, everything was perfect until a man named Adam broke God's only rule and brought sin and death into the world. Sin is what separates us from God. Everything that's good in the world comes from God. We definitely don't want to be separated from him. That's why he made a plan for us to be close to him again. God made a plan. That's all good. But how did people even know that a savior was coming? Well... 
God told certain people that it was going to happen, and they told others. One of those people was a guy named John the Baptist. He spoke the truth to others that the Savior was coming. There you have it. God made a plan. He prepared for a Savior to save us from sin. But who is this Savior? Hmm? Is he perhaps a... He's not a bear. Tune in next time when we'll uncover the truth of who this Savior was and how it all connects to the virtually unknown holiday, Trismus. It's Christmas, and it's like the most famous holiday of all time. Until next time, I'm Hunt Burkleton, and I know what's really going on.